In this tutorial, I will show you how to create this 3D emoji. I am hoping to do different emojis in the future, so stay tuned for those. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. This is called Emojipedia, um, and I'm going to use this crazy face here. And down here we have image versions of it. I'm going to be using the Apple one, so right click, and then you can save that image to downloads. Okay, now go into Blender, and we're going to open up our file browser, and just drag that face into Blender. And then we can delete the default cube, go here and hit Alt-G, then Alt-R to reset the location and rotation, then hit RX90, so that we have this in front of you. Now we're just going to go into the little image panel here, and we can uncheck perspective and then set the depth to front and that will make it so that if we have an object in here it's going to be in front of that object um, and then we are going to turn on transparency set this to like 0.4 is what I found works pretty well and then we also are going to set the front or the side to front only so that means when we go into back view we won't see anything okay now that we have that all set up, time to add in our sphere. So add in a UV sphere, and then we're going to select the image and just scale this down till it's lining up. And we usually have to just kind of move the image around a little bit to get it to line up well. Okay, now that we have that done, we're just going to make this image not selectable. So go to the um, object properties, and we're going to go to visibility and uncheck selectable because now we can select anything behind this image. Okay, so select the sphere. The first thing we're going to do is just add a subdivision surface and then shade it smooth. Now we are going to add the eyes. So Shift D to duplicate, just line that up with the center of the eye and we'll just scale this down. We can also delete that subdivision surface for the eyes because we're not going to need as much geometry. And just bring it forward and usually what works for me is to scale it up because you can see it's not quite the shape of the eye because of the roundness of the head so I just usually scale it up until it becomes closer to that eye shape that we were looking for. Okay, now that we have that done, let's shift D to duplicate this other one. And we can just scale this down and bring it forward until we have the right shape. I'm going to go with something like this. If you go out of the front view, you can see that this is what it's looking like. Not looking too good right now, but it's going to look good, trust me. So I duplicate another eye, and we're going to make this pupil shape. Uh, and then just bring this forward. And then we're going to duplicate this down to here, scale it down a little bit, and bring it back. And I'll just bring this one back a little bit as well. Okay, now it's time for the mouth, so we're going to hit Shift A, add in a circle, tab into edit mode, RX90, and then you can scale this down, oh, except we want to move this forward, so it's G and Y, and then we're going to scale this down, and we lucked out that this scaling it down lines it up pretty much exactly with the shape of this smile. So the next thing we're going to do is make this a half circle, so double tap A so we have nothing selected and then we're going to hit C and starting with this vertex here we're going to go around selecting dragging to select everything until we have this top half here selected hit X and then delete we want to make sure that we still have these two vertices here because we're going to use those so we're going to hit O for proportional editing and then we're going to hit G and just bring that down into place do that for the other side as well. <laughs> now we're going to um, make this round shape here. So to do that, what we're going to do is double tap A to deselect everything. And then we're going to select using C for circle select and just select these bottom ones so that we have three unselected on both sides. Then we're going to hit comma and change the orientation to normal. So that means when we hit shift D and Z, it'll bring it up along that normal axis. Then we're going to scale it down on that z-axis, but we're going to turn off proportional editing with O first, and just S and Z, so that we have it approximately the right shape. 
Now for these end vertices, we're just going to select both of them and hit F to fill that with an edge. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And you can see this is going to need a little bit of tweaking. So do that now. And once that's done, we have our mouth shape. What I'm going to do next is go into edit or object mode and duplicate this. And then this is going to be called circle 001. I'm going to rename this teeth just so we know what it is. And then we can go down here and just hide that. With this circle, I guess I'll just rename it mouth while I'm at it. I'm going to fill it. So hit A and F to fill. And then we're going to hit E and just extrude that back into the head. Now we can um, add a subdivision surface. And we are going to crease the front and back so that we don't have this awful geometry. So hit 3 for face select, and we're just going to select these two faces, and then hit shift E and 1, and that'll do, that will um, crease those front and back faces. Then we're going to shade it smooth, go into object data properties, and check auto smooth. Then hit slash so we have this again. Next, we're going to create a Boolean. I'm going to be using the Bool tool, so go to Preferences and search for that Bool tool add-on and enable that there. Now what we can do is select this mouth part, and we're going to select the head next, and hit Control shift b and then go down to Brush Boolean and Difference, and that'll automatically create a Boolean for us. Uh, we can have to do a, little, a few things. We're going to turn on Auto Smooth, um, and then we are going to actually uh, move this around so that we have our desired effect. I'm going to move it back into the head a small bit more. Okay, now that we have that done, what we can do is uh, unhide these teeth and we're going to start working on them. So tab into edit mode, select the teeth, tab into edit mode, and we're going to hit vertex select and we're going to delete everything below these two vertices. So double tap A, deselect everything, we're just going to use the C circle select tool to select all those, right click, and then X, delete vertices. Now we're going to hit C and select all these up here, except for those corner ones. We're going to hit Shift D, Z, bring that down. And then we're going to fill these edges here. And we can actually just kind of select all these bottom face or edges and bring them up using G and Z. Then we can kind of bring these in a little as well. Okay, now that we have that done, we are going to fill this. Um, but we're not going to just hit A and F. Instead, we're going to create kind of like edge loops. So first, let's start with this one in the middle. So select these four vertices, hit F. And then we can just select two vertices on one side to make an edge, and if we hit F, it'll automatically fill that next face. And you can just repeat this till the end. And you can see that we have, right here, we don't have a face here. We just hit F again, and it'll fill that final face. You want to make sure you do fill that final face. Do the same thing here, hit F, until we get to the end, and make sure you fill that final face. Okay, now that we have that done, we are going to hit slash again and we are going to round this out. So, go into top view, tab into edit mode, alt Z, and then we can just select these center vertices here, turn on proportional editing and change this to sphere, and then we're gonna hit G and Y, or G, and we're gonna turn on, go back to global orientation, and we're gonna hit G and Y, and just kind of bend this into a more spherical shape. You can see that some of these things got bent a little bit weirdly, but I don't think it's going to be too big of a problem. We can hit Alt-Z and just hit G and Y to bring this back into the head. You can see that it's going to probably need a little bit more work. So go into top view again, Alt-Z, and we can just give it a little bit more shape. We're going to hit A and extrude everything back. And now we have some teeth. We're going to subdivide these teeth. So subdivision surface, turn up the quality, and for these I want to select this face here and just hit G and Y just to move it back the slightest bit. Shade it smooth, and it's time to move on to the tongue. So add in a plane, bring this down so G and Z, and then scale it down on the x-axis so that it's roughly the size of this tongue here. 
we can might have to move it along the x-axis a little bit as well. Then we can go into side view and just bring this forward. And you can see where the math ends because we have this object here. That's the cutter that defines how deep the math is. So make sure that this plane doesn't go beyond or into the mouth. We want it to start back in the head. Then tab into edit mode, hit 1, then alt Z. We're just going to box select these front guys. We can turn off proportional editing, and then we're going to bring this back to here. We're going to hit start just extruding down to make a tongue. And if we go into front view, you can turn off proportional editing and just kind of bring these down a little bit more. We can edge slide one of these down a little bit. And then we can turn off, or before we turn off proportional editing, I'm going to scale down this here. But you can see that we want to change this back to smooth to make that better. And then we can also scale this edge loop here up. Turn off proportional editing. I'm just going to bring down this edge loop. And you can see we have a rough tongue shape. And we're just going to subdivide it using a subdivision surface. And we can shade that smooth. Next, I'm going to add a loop cut down the middle, hit slash, and we're going to hit control B to bevel that. And then we're going to select these two faces here, hit alt E, extrude faces along normals, extrude them back to make that kind of tongue indent you want. Hit slash again, then we're going to add a solidify modifier, and we can turn this up a little bit. And then we're also going to add another subdivision surface to round that out. Um, turn it up to 2, and we can turn up this solidify modifier. And we can also turn on auto smooth. Or we can just leave that off because we don't want sharp edges. Okay, now we have our modeling done. Let's go do some quick shading. So go into the shading workspace, and we are going to go into front view, and we're going to go down to this empty, click on it, click on the empty, and we want to change this. So it's selectable again. Now select it and hit G and X to so just bring it over. Then we're going to uncheck transparency and check display perspective as well. Let's select this head and we're going to assign it just this base material. And let's just rename this head. And we can click on this base color and use this color picker tool just to pick a color from our emoji here. And then for these eyeballs, let's make a new material, call it eyes. And we're just going to make this shiny, so bring down the roughness all the way. And assign that to this other eye as well. Then let's select this pupil. You can use this eyes material and just duplicate it with that button there. You rename it pupil. And then just make this base color black. And give it to this eye as well. For the teeth, I'm going to use this eyes material, duplicate it, and call it teeth. And we are going to turn up the roughness just a little bit. And for this head, we're going to turn down the roughness to make it look kind of like plasticky. Kind of both soft, but not all the way shiny. For the tongue, let's add a new material, call it tongue. And we are going to select a color from this tongue here. You might want to adjust that color until you get what you like. I might make it a little bit darker. Just a little bit though. And I'm going to turn down the roughness a small amount. And then for this mouth, this brown mouth color, what we have to do is um, add a mouth color to our boolean here. So add base color. We're going to pick this brown color here. And you can see nothing's happened yet, but we have, what we have to do is select the head then go to materials and add in this math material. And then you can see it automatically assigns it to the place that the boolean was. Great, we're done with our emoji. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.